Hello everyone, this is Brad Wistance with a standalone video where I make another attempt at a land speed record. I made a land speed record craft about a, about a month ago and I got it up to about 1,540 meters per second before the, the game ceased to detect collision properly and I, I sunk through the surface with uh, amusing but ultimately catastrophic crashes. After this video I discovered a workaround using slow motion physics warp that allowed my computer here to still detect collision and I was able to get it up to about 1,850 meters per second. And I figured this was about the the limit of the what one could do with stock parts and stock physics. But people in the comments section seemed adamant that I would be able to find a way to add about 500 meters per second more and reach orbital speed while still on the surface. And I didn't think this was possible because I thought I had wrung everything out of the previous craft and I would be facing exponentially increasing drag and exponentially increasing heating from the atmosphere and 500 more meters per second just didn't seem possible. However, a, a couple days ago, Mark Thrym brought to my attention some very interesting things someone one can do with part clipping. So I figured I'd try some uh, mild part clipping and see what was possible. What we've been watching so far is a transport taking the rocket car to the South Pole. And why, while the transport might look very large compared to the rocket car, uh, some mild part clipping has made the ratio not exactly what you'd expect. The, the first stage on the car is just a bunch of fuel tanks hanging off the back, and this should take it up to about 600 meters per second. The, the middle stage has 80 vector engines clipped together to look like five. And uh, actually, I think I'll wait to you guys for you guys to see how fast that reaches. And the final stage has 16 vector engines all clipped together. So the middle of it is actually extremely massive, but made very compact due to the uh, quote-unquote mild part clipping. Before I go into the run itself, I wanted to go over the two main challenges I faced in making this mission. Surprisingly, having a high enough drag limited top speed was not one of them. Since I was using engine clipping, adding more engines did not increase the frontal area of the craft, and therefore, adding more engines was enough to get through any amount of aerodynamic drag that I faced. Surprisingly, uh, structural rigidity was not one of them either. Uh, even without auto strut turned on, the, the craft stayed together with, um, with very little effort. I did have to make some changes to exactly how I had the landing gear attached, but I didn't face that much trouble with the, the craft disintegrating due to forces. Uh, the first main problem was, was heat. I went through a lot of different variations on how to build the nose of this craft until I, I came across this one, which is two heat shields on the front of a utility bay, which is on front of a fairing with a bunch of radiators in it. And this proved able to handle just about anything that I threw at it. However, the, the biggest problem in making this video was dealing with the incredible array of bugs that I faced. To give you guys just a taste of what I dealt with, I dealt with everything from landing gear disappearing to my computer crashing to the craft just deciding that it wanted to transform itself into what looked like a bowl of spaghetti. However, the, the only bug I was not able to resolve was a very strange and elusive one involving stability. When I tested this craft, both the final stage and the penultimate stage were entirely stable on the ground and I could run them without any SAS on Without making any adjustments, it was just naturally aerodynamically stable and wanted to go in a straight line. However, when I drove it after using the bottom stage, which is the fuel tanks hanging off the back, I'd drive it up to the maximum speed allowed before those fuel tanks ran out, I would detach them, and now the second stage was now unstable. This made no sense because it was the exact same thing I had tested Yet for some reason, using the bottom stage and then detaching it made the exact same craft unstable. I, I, Despite everything that I tried, I was not able to resolve this, and I ended up having to just do the mission while having the gimbal of the engines turned on and using SAS to keep the thing straight. This made the thing wobble around like a madman, but it, it didn't break anything, so it looks ugly, but I had to live with it. So before I do the speed attempt itself, let me go over quickly what we're about to see. During the first stage, we'll be draining fuel from the fuel tanks mounted off the back of the center engine. 
Uh, it'll look like just a single fuel tank there, but it is really many fuel tanks clipped together in series. And we'll be using 64 of the vector engines from the middle stage at that point. After that runs out of fuel, it'll be detached and we'll be using the entire set of 80 vector engines in the center stage. This should get us up to a very good speed. Uh, it will be unstable due to the stability issue that I mentioned earlier, but with any luck it won't explode. And then I'll detach the final stage, which has been absolutely optimized and will hopefully get us up to unimaginable top speeds. So without any further waffling, let's get into it. So starting off the land speed attempt, I put SAS on and set it to prograde. Combined with a reasonable setting of the engine gimbal, this was effective in keeping the craft on the ground and in a straight line. And, and nothing exploded, so a, a real win there. The first two stages were able to get me up to about 1700 meters per second, whereupon I then unleashed the final entirely optimized land speed record craft. To uh, absolutely everyone's surprise, including my own, it managed to reach almost 2,500 meters per second. During the deceleration phase, an old and unfriendly bug reared its head, and the rear landing gear of the craft just decided to disappear. The craft then flew in the air and transformed into what appears to be some kind of giant shrimp. Honestly, uh, your guess is just about as good as mine on this one. I, um, I have absolutely no explanation for that. After flying through the air and crashing, the utility bay somehow survived. I have seen this before. Utility bays are shockingly durable, but uh, this one surprised even me. But probably the, uh, the best surprise of this mission was that the pilot had somehow survived this crash. And indeed, any mission you walk away from is a good one. So the official land speed reached in this video was 2,495.8 meters per second. This is incidentally suborbital speed, putting the apoapsis all the way into space at 81 kilometers. And I guess it just goes to show you that with a, with a tiny bit of part clipping, one can get a stock craft to do just about anything. So I hope that everyone's enjoyed what I attempted to make a deliciously strange video. Please leave any questions or feedback you have below. And remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and you want to see more. Thank you very much for watching.